ஹலோ எவ்ரி ஒன் வெல்கம் பேக் டு லெசன் செவன் ஆஃப் எலிமெண்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் மெக்கானிக்கல் இன்ஜினியரிங் இன் திஸ் லெசன் வில் பி டேக்கிங் யூ த்ரூ கான்செப்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஸ்டீம் ஸோ ஹவு ஸ்டீம் இஸ் ஃபார்ம் அட் கான்ஸ்டன்ட் ப்ரெஷர் அண்ட் வாட் ஆர் த ப்ராப்பர்ட்டிஸ் ஆஃப் ஸ்டீம் விச் வி லுக் ஃபார் திஸ் இஸ் த லர்னிங் ஆப்ஜெக்டிவ் ஆஃப் திஸ் பர்டிகுலர் லெசன் மூவிங் அ ஹெட் வாட் இஸ் ஸ்டீம் steam can be a vapor it is a vapor what is a vapor then a vapor is partially evaporated liquid carrying particles of liquid in it vapors do not obey gas laws but at high temperatures and pre- low pressures their behaviors are very much similar to that of a gas steam is a vapor form of water and is generated by supplying heat to water steam is most widely used as a heat transport fluid it is the one which transmits heat and convert that into mechanical energy and in turn into electrical energy so steam is the pure substance and it has got high thermal efficiency and high thermal capacity which are basically used for running steam engines and steam turbines to extract mechanical energy which in turn can be converted into electrical energy so let us discuss how the steam can be formed so here we will be discussing the formation of steam at constant pressure this formation of steam at constant pressure can be illustrated as shown in this sketch consider a cylinder fitted with an frictionless movable piston over which we will be placing a dead weight w and in the cylinder we have taken water at 0 degree centigrade so this is the cylinder fitted with an frictionless movable piston over which we are placing a dead weight w and we have taken water at 0 degree centigrade we have taken water at 0 degrees centigrade so why we are placing this dead weight dead weight is the one which will be exerting pressure on the water from the outside so it is nothing but the pressure being exerted on the water from outside and this weight remains constant throughout our steam formation process so that mean to say the pressure that is being exerted on the water that is being heated is remaining constant throughout our process of stream formation it is remaining constant so that is the reason it is known as steam formation at constant pressure so once water is heated whatever the wa- there will be change in pressure and all those things will happen within the system but from outside the system from the external environment to the system we are maintaining constant pressure so we have taken water at 0 degree centigrade in a cylinder fitted with an frictionless piston over which we are placing a dead weight w to exert constant pressure so we will be supplying heat to this we will be supplying heat to this so what are the initial temperature of the water so initial temperature of the water is at 0 degree centigrade so once we start adding heat to it once we start adding heat to it so temperature of water keeps on rising from 0 degree it becomes 1 1 to 2 slowly it picks up so as the temperature of the water increases the heat content within the water also increases so initially when water is at 0 degree centigrade what are the heat content of the water that is heat stored in the water is also zero so heat content in a substance is what we call it as an enthalpy so this constant pressure steam formation can also be supported with this th diagram so what is this th diagram it's a temperature enthalpy diagram which will depict what happens to the enthalpy when there is a change in the temperature so along the x axis we will be taking the enthalpy and along the y axis we will be taking the temperature that's the reason it is known as th diagram temperature denoted by t and enthalpy by h so as we start this process so initially we are here at this point a what is point a 
temperature is also zero enthalpy is also zero that means to say that is the initial state before we heat that water so water is at zero degree centigrade so temperature is at zero degree centigrade when the temperature is zero even the enthalpy enthalpy is nothing but the heat content in the water is also zero okay so as we start heating this what happens the temperature of the water increases as the temperature increases the heat content or the enthalpy of the water also it increases you can just see as we start heating it so on this th diagram we will be moving from point a to point b so increase in temperature increase in enthalpy for every change in the temperature there will be change in the enthalpy and this will happen till we reach this point b what is this point b so point b is the one where we will raising the temperature from 0 degree centigrade to ts degree centigrade so what is ts so ts is nothing but the saturation temperature or simply we can just call it as the boiling temperature so boiling temperature means the temperature at which the water molecules or the water particles will start boiling start boiling means whereby now it starts evaporating so as soon as we reach this particular point b so water will start evaporating now so that you can see here so initially at 0 degree centigrade it has been heated to a temperature ts so ts is the saturation temperature so where the water starts boiling so once the water starts boiling so all the wa water particles will now slowly start getting converted into steam particles that is nothing but change of phase from liquid phase to vapor state so that's what it happens here that's what it happens so it has been converted is now started getting converted from liquid state to vapor state so slowly one by one each and every particle of the water will start evaporating and get converted into steam and then this state we call it as a wet steam why we call it as a wet steam is because in this particular wet steam it has got both water particle as well as steam particle so in this case it exists as a two-phase mixture what is a two-phase mixture it has got the water particles also in it as well as the steam particles or vapor particles so the steam exists in the form of wet steam so which is a two-phase mixture consisting of both water particles and the steam particles in it so that will happen that will happen at constant temperature ts only see here so we'll start moving from point b to point c so what is this from point b to point point b is the starting of the vaporization of water and point c is the ending of the vaporization process what does it mean so here it starts boiling and the vapors will be formed so valve water particles will be slowly getting converted as we move from this point to this point slowly amount of water particles keeps on diminishing and amount of vapor particle keeps on increasing by the time we reach this point c all the water particles which was there at point b would have been converted into vapor particles by the time we reach point c and this vaporization vaporization means converting water particles into steam particles will take place at constant temperature what is the temperature at saturation temperature so once the water reaches point b that is saturation temperature so the water and the heat supplied to the water will be at thermal equilibrium they are saturated with each other so further addition of heat will not change the temperature of the water but it will initiate vaporization process so which will change the state of the liquid from liquid state to vapor state but there will be or there won't be any change in the temperature because thermal equilibrium has been established between the boiling water and the heat that is being supplied to the water so this will continue till we reach from point b to point c so more of water particles will be here by the time here is here no water particles complete it is steam particles so that is what you can see in this particular sketch so by the time we reach point b this is the state so all the water molecules or all the water particles are being completely converted into vapor so then in that state we call that steam as dry saturated steam previously it was a wet steam because 
it has got both water as well as steam particles by the time we reach point c in this particular graph all the water particles would have been completely converted into steam particles or vapor particles which is in the dry states that's the reason once we reach this particular point c we say that it is a dry saturated steam what we have but from from point b to point c the steam will be in the form of wet steam okay so that is what we have shown in this particular diagram so further addition of heat what happens so further addition of heat it will increase the heat content of the steam as well as it will again increase the temperature of the steam you can just see as we move as we further add heat to the dry saturated steam it will increase the quality of steam as well as it will increase the temperature of the dry saturated steam to an better quality which we call it as superheated steam which we call it as superheated steam okay so this point d it is not set to any value it is a desired value so to whatever the value you want beyond the saturation temperature you can increase the dry saturated steam by few more degrees to reach this superheated temperature so accord accordingly that amount of heat is being added to that steam to increase its quality and that becomes the superheated steam that becomes the superheated steam so when it is a liquid phase change in temperature change in enthalpy when it's a two phase mixture no change in the temperature constant temperature but change of phase from liquid state to vapor state so once it has been completely converted into a vapor further addition of heat will increase the temperature of the steam as well as it will increase the grade of the steam from dry saturated state to superheated state that is what we have shown here okay this is how the steam is being formed at constant why constant pressure because the external force or the external pressure acting on the piston is same w but due to change in the state from water to wet steam wet steam to dry saturated steam dry saturated to superheated steam so there will be an increase in the volume that we know see as we add heat to the water what happens initially when the water is at 0 degree centigrade the density of water will be i as it starts fetching heat as, as it starts absorbing it what happens as the temperature increases density decreases as the density decreases the volume has to increase that you can observe here initially the volume of the water was vl you can just observe as we move from water state to wet state the volume has increased why because the density has decreased due to which the volume increases volume increases isn't it so volume has increased means it pushes the piston up thereby giving some work output isn't it it is giving some work output against w against w is against the pressure that is being exerted from outside so further addition of it again it has changed the state from what wet state to dry state or dry saturated state so further there is a decrease in the density because it was a two phase mixture here but here it is completely a vapor form so when it is a vapor form density is very less so when the density is very less volume increases further the volume of the steam changes to vg further addition of it changes the state from dry, dry saturated state to superheated state so further it will decrease the density of the steam increasing the volume so that is what we call it as v super that is superheated volume okay so that mean to say the volume increases as the volume increases work is being done by the system okay so this is the formation of steam at constant pressure which we can see and understand the th temperature and enthalpy so what happens to the heat content as the temperature increases okay so in this diagram you can just see that from a to b it is nothing but heating the water from 0 degree centigrade to ts degree centigrade from b to c changing the phase of the mixture from from liquid phase to vapor phase at the same temperature what is from c to d increasing the quality of steam by increasing the temperature of the steam by t super which is above the saturation temperature 
so here you can just see that this is what we call it as sensible lead sensible lead is nothing but the heat content or the heat required to increase or increase the temperature of the water from 0 degree centigrade to ts degree centigrade what is the latent heat the amount of heat required to convert all the water particles into steam particles right this is the total amount of heat required to convert all the water particles into steam particles what is the amount of super heat that is the amount of heat that is required to increase the quality of dry saturated steam to superheated steam to a temperature t super above that of ts degree centigrade so these are the amount of heat required so that definition again we'll see in the coming slides so now let us define certain parameters or properties connected with the formation of steam one such is temperature which we already discussed so what is the saturation temperature so saturation temperature is nothing but the temperature at which the water starts boiling isn't it it is nothing but the temperature corresponding to a saturation temperature at which the liquid starts boiling boiling means once it starts the vapor phase once it initiates the vapor phase and bear in mind the saturation temperature is dependent on the pressure so we say that the boiling temperature of water is 100 degree yes it is 100 degree at what pressure at normal temperature and pressure at atmospheric pressure not at all pressure water will boil at 100 degree so depending on the pressure more the pressure less will be the saturation temperature less the pressure more will be the saturation temperature so if you don't exert any pressure at normal or atmospheric temp uh, pressure if, uh, if i start boiling water it will boil at 100 degree centigrade okay so saturation temperature is not fixed it depends on the pressure at which we are boiling the water so ts is nothing but the saturation temperature which will initiate the boiling process which will initiate the vaporization process then what is superheated temperature t superheated is uh, superheated temperature denoted by t super it is any desired temperature above saturation temperature see here we are eating the steam beyond saturated state the dry saturated state we are eating it to a temperature something any desired value there is nothing fixed 1 degree above ts or 5 degree above ts 10 degree above here ts so anything above the saturation temperature if you are eating the dry saturated steam to become superheated steam so that temperature beyond ts to which we read, we eat is what we call it as superheated temperature any desired temperature above saturation temperature is superheated temperature as i said when we form this steam steam do exist in three phase we have seen that first it is in the form of a wet steam then it becomes a dry saturated steam and finally it becomes a superheated steam so let us see what are this so first is wet steam so as i said wet steam is a two phase mixture of entrained water particles or water molecules and steam in thermal equilibrium at a given saturation temperature and pressure okay so wet steam as i said it is a two phase mixture two phase mixture means it has got both water particles in it as well as steam particles in it so this is what we call it as wet steam it's a two phase mixture so the quality of this wet steam is normally defined by this dryness fraction x as the name says dryness fraction in this wet steam what is the amount of dryness that exists is the measure of dryness fraction so dryness fraction we can easily measure it is nothing but a ratio of mass of dry steam present in the total mass of this steam mass of the dry steam present in the total mass for example i'll take mg as the mass of the steam here here you have a steam right so mass of the steam is mg and here you have water mf is the mass of the fluid or water okay so what is this uh, dryness ratio out of this total mass what is the dry mass present so mg is the dry mass so therefore dryness fraction x is given by mass of dry steam divided by total mass total mass means what displaced this right mass of 
dry steam plus mass of water suspension mg divided by mg plus mf so this gives you value from 0 to 1 what does it mean if x is equal to 0 means what if x is equal to 0 that means to say you don't have any steam particle it is completely a water particle if x is equal to 1 what does it mean if x if x has to become 1 mf has to be 0 if mf is 0 mg by mg so total mass is nothing but equal to mg only so it becomes 1 so if mg x is equal to 1 that means to say it is full of steam particles no water particles right so this quality of wet steam is denoted by or is indicated by this dryness fraction so it can vary from 0 to 1 for example if x says x is 0 0.2 what does it indicate 20 percent dry 0.2 means that steam is 20 percent dry that means to say this steam particle is made up of 20 percent steam so remaining 80 percent is water if i say x is 0 0.5 what does it mean so 50 percent is steam particle and remaining 50 percent is water particle similarly if x is 0 0.8 what does it indicate 80 percent dry so 80 percent steam particle and 20 percent water particles so converse to this dryness fraction sometimes we also define in terms of wetness fraction wetness fraction is just the reverse the wetness fraction is given by mf mass of the water suspension to divided by the total mass or simply i can say this as wetness fraction i can just take it as 1 minus x isn't it if 20 percent is dry remaining 80 percent it has to wet 50 percent is dry remaining 50 percent has to wet 80 percent if it is dry remaining 20 percent it has to be wet right so dryness fraction or wetness fraction okay x denotes the dryness fraction 1 minus x denotes the wetness fraction so quality of wet steam is denoted by this dryness fraction lesser the x value more is the wet more the x value less is the wet or more is the dry okay so this is one type of steam so as we keep on adding so it becomes what dry saturated steam what do you mean by dry saturated steam it is nothing but when all the water particles have been completely converted into vapor particle all the water particles have been completely converted into steam particle then it is known as dry saturated steam dry saturated steam is x will be equal to one no water particles will be present in that particular mixture or it is completely a steam that is on th diagram it is nothing but the point c from b to c it is wet steam exactly at c it is d dry saturated steam beyond c up to d it will be superheated steam so what is superheated steam eating the steam it is nothing but eating the steam beyond saturated temperature to any desired value and the quality of steam at that temperature is what we call it as superheated steam so it is extremely high temperature vapor generated by eating the saturated steam obtained by boiling water so whatever the saturated steam we get so beyond that we eat it further to any temperature any desired temperature beyond saturation temperature and the steam so obtained eating it beyond saturation temperature is what we call it as superheated temperature next let us see one more property of the steam which we call it as specific volume so what is the difference between volume and a specific volume so volume is nothing but the space occupied there is nothing but the space occupied what is the specific volume it is nothing but the space or the volume occupied by unit mass of the substance so volume unit is meter cube but specific volume uh, unit is meter cube per unit mass okay what is the volume occupied by water what is the volume occupied by air what is the volume occupied by gas that is volume what is specific volume what is the volume occupied by 1 kg of water what is the volume occupied by 1 kg of air what is the volume occupied by 1 kg of gas what is the volume occupied by 1 kg of cotton that is what we call it as specific volume specific volume is nothing but how much volume it occupies what any substance that occupies per unit mass 
per kg how much it occupies so it is just the reciprocal of the density density you know that the unit is what what is the mass per unit volume is density if i take one volume of 1 meter cube of air or 1 meter cube of water what are the mass of it that is density but here specific volume is just the reverse so that you can see the units density is kg per meter cube whereas specific volume is meter cube per kg that is why i said as we increase the temperature the density decreases as the density decreases the volume has to increase the specific volume and density as the density declines the volume what the specific volume increases why as the temperature increases density decreases as the density decreases it will increase its specific volume okay so when it comes to the specific volume obviously the volume occupied by the wet steam the dry saturated steam and the superheated steam differs depending on the density so how can we calculate the specific volume of these three conditions of steam what are those three condition wet steam dry saturated steam and the superheated steam so what is the specific volume of wet steam so that is given wet steam as you know it is a two phase mixture so volume occupied by wet steam is nothing but volume occupied by water particles plus volume occupied by steam particles isn't it so this is the volume occupied by water particle water and this is the volume occupied by the steam particle and here we are multiplying it by respective fraction so steam need to be multiplied by dryness fraction and water need to be multiplied volume occupied by water need to be multiplied by wetness fraction x is as i said is the dryness fraction and 1 minus x is the wetness fraction if i just take a wet steam as you know it has got steam as well as water what are the volume occupied specific volume of vapor particles is different and specific volume of liquid particles are different therefore we take it separately so depending on the dryness so x into vg is the volume occupied by the steam particles so based on the dryness and 1 minus x into volume of water is the volume occupied by this water particles so total specific volume of this wet steam is nothing but x plus vg plus 1 minus x into x into vg plus 1 minus x into vg that is how we measure the specific volume of a wet steam that is shown in this equation now once it becomes dry what will be the specific volume of a dry saturated steam so once we it becomes completely dry what does it mean x is equal to 1 when x is equal to 1 what happens so there won't be any water particles at all this becomes zero so therefore volume of what volume specific volume of dry saturated steam vg is nothing but equal to x into vg x is nothing but 1 vg itself specific volume of got it so what about the specific volume of superheated steam superheated state heating it beyond saturation temperature so that uh, superheated temperature is not fixed it can be any desired value therefore it is very difficult to estimate the volume occupied by the superheated steam so as the temperature increases density further decreases and the volume changes so therefore approximately we can estimate the specific volume occupied by the superheated steam using charles law using charles law so approximately superheated steam specific volume is given by ratio of superheated temperature to saturation temperature multiplied by the volume specific volume of dry saturated steam so using this equation we can find what is the specific volume of superheated steam let us move on to the next property enthalpy so this we discussed with the th diagram what is enthalpy enthalpy is nothing but the heat content of the substance so what is sensible heat i did show you in the th diagram moving from a to b from point a to b is the sensible heat what is it heat it is nothing but the amount of heat that is required to raise the temperature of water from 0 degree centigrade to saturation temperature i did tell you this when explain th diagram so it is the amount of heat 
that increases the temperature of water from 0 degree to Ts degree centigrade. That amount of heat required is what we call it as sensible heat denoted by Hf. F stands for fluid. It is still a water. We are increasing the temperature of water. Then what is latent heat of evaporation? It is nothing but the amount of heat that is required to move from point B to C. From point B to C. That is what we call it as latent heat of evaporation. It is nothing but it is the amount of heat required to convert 1 kg of water at saturation temperature into 1 kg of dry saturated steam at the same temperature and pressure. If we just refer this TH diagram, there is no change in the temperature, isn't it? From B to C, C are latent heat of. So, what is the amount of heat required to convert 1 kg of water? It is still a water here. Here it is completely a steam. So, amount of heat required to convert water, 1 kg of water into 1 kg of dry saturated steam at the same temperature. Temperature won't change at same temperature and anyway it is a steam generation at constant pressure at same temperature and pressure so that is what we call it as latent heat of evaporation and it is denoted by hfg why combination f and g because it is a process where where fluid particles are being converted into gaseous particles it is nothing but water particles are being converted into vapor particles or steam particles so that is the reason why we denote this latent heat of evaporation by h f g f stands for fluid g stands for gaseous state fluid state and gaseous state and here it is completely fluid that's the reason we have used h f Okay, then what happens to the dry saturated steam? What is the enthalpy of the dry saturated? So, what it has to reach this point C on TH diagram. What are the total heat required? What are the total heat required? So, we are converting water at 0 degree centigrade to steam at TS degree centigrade. So, finally what? Water at 0 degree centigrade is being converted to dry saturated steam at saturation temperature TS. So, we are moving from 0 degree centigrade to Ts degree centigrade. Water is being converted to steam. So, what is the total amount of heat required? So, it is nothing but what? Addition of this plus this, right? So, sensible heat plus latent heat. of Sensible heat to rise from 0 degree to Ts degree centigrade. Then, latent heat to convert water at Ts degree centigrade to steam at same Ts degree centigrade. It will be completely converted into water. So, total and the amount of heat that is required to convert water from 0 degree centigrade to dry saturated steam at the same saturated to the saturation temperature is what we call it as enthalpy of dry saturated steam denoted by HGYG because once we reach this point C, it will be completely a steam particle. Therefore, it is nothing but summation of sensible heat and latent heat of evaporation. So, therefore, Hg is given by Hf plus Hfg. So, this is how we measure the enthalpy of steam. So, moving ahead, I have just shown the enthalpy can also be measured at different points. So, at A to B, as I said, it is sensible heat. B to C it is latent heat of evaporation. At C it is nothing but the total heat required or the enthalpy of dry saturated steam. What if I want to measure enthalpy in between? What if I want to measure enthalpy in between? What about the enthalpy of superheated steam? So that is what we can do it here. So enthalpy of wet steam. So wet steam is what? As we are moving from point B to point C. Okay. Which is a two-phase mixture, isn't it? It's a two-phase mixture. So here the x is equal to 0 and here the x is equal to 1. As we move from point B to point C, water particles are being converted into vapor particles. So that means to say wetness decreases, dryness increases as we move from B to C. So isn't it? So wetness decreases. X from equal to 0 become equal to 1. In between you will have point 1, point 0.2, point 0.3, whatever values up to we reach x is equal to 1. So, if I want to check what is the enthalpy at any point here, what is the enthalpy at any point here? It is nothing but what? 
This is the amount of heat required from A to B. That is nothing but sensible heat. Plus this much of heat that is required to bring the quality to some value. X is equal to 0.5. Let us assume exactly at midpoint. I just want to know. I want a wet steam of quality 0.5 or dryness 0.5. So that means say this is the amount of heat that is required, isn't it? So how do I calculate this one? So this is nothing but equal to what? Total sensible heat plus the amount of heat that is required to bring the quality of wet steam to 0.5 dryness, 50% dryness. So that is denoted by this formula here. Enthalpy of wet steam can be calculated using HF, sensible heat, plus X into HFG. So from B to C it is HFG, but we are not completely converting water particle into vapor particle. Why? Because x is not equal to 1 we are trying to find somewhere in between if value of x is not 1 so what to do in, in that case you have to multiply this hfg by this dryness fraction so that will give you what is the enthalpy content or the heat content of the wet steam at the at the given dryness fraction x at the given dryness fraction x so enthalpy of wet steam is given by hf plus x into hfg so this is how we find the enthalpy of wet steam what about enthalpy of dry saturated steam it is nothing but once we reach this point c only that means to say x will be equal to 1 so in the same formula if i substitute x is equal to 1 which is nothing but sensible heat plus total latent heat of evaporation hfg so enthalpy of dry saturated steam is given by hf plus hfg and beyond this dry saturated state is the superheated state. So, how do we find the superheated state or superheated steam enthalpy? So, obviously, first it has to completely become dry saturated, right? So, therefore, that amount of heat is required, Hg, plus beyond the saturation temperature, I am heating it to any desired value above it. So, corresponding to whatever the temperature I eat above saturation temperature, that much of heat will be added to the what dry saturated steam and convert that into superheat. So, that depends on the CP values. CP value means specific capacity of the steam. It is nothing but the specific capacity of the steam. So, based on the steam capacity and the difference in the temperature or the temperature to which I eat beyond saturation temperature will decide the enthalpy or the heat content of it. So, it is H super, superheated steam enthalpy is denoted by Hg. First, you have to convert into dry saturated steam. Beyond that, plus Cps of T super plus minus Ts. Okay. Hg, anyway, I know it is nothing but Hf plus Hg. So, same thing can be written in terms of Hf plus Hfg also. This is the, how we calculate the enthalpy of superheated steam. Moving ahead, we will be discussing about steam table. What are the purpose of this steam table? So, we will be solving few numericals on finding certain properties of steam. Maybe specific volume, maybe enthalpy of wet steam, enthalpy of dry saturated steam or enthalpy of superheated steam. So, like that, we will be solving few numericals in the next lesson. But in order to solve the numericals, we should be knowing what is the enthalpy possessed by the steam. So, enthalpy possessed by the steam, that is the heat content possessed by the steam depends on two things, either the temperature or the pressure. So, there are two types of steam table which we will be using it. So, there is a steam table known as temperature table and one more steam table known as a pressure table. So, there are few numericals where the temperature would be given. There are few numericals where pressure would be given. If the temperature is given, we have to refer temperature table to note down certain properties of steam at that given temperature. So, this is how a typical steam table that is temperature table looks like. So, normally we would be giving you temperature in the problem. At a given temperature, what is the pressure? What is the pressure of the steam that they would specify? 
so the temperature is given in the numerical so for a given temperature from the temperature table you have to note down all these properties what the pressure specific volume and the enthalpy at a different condition what are those at the given temperature what is the pressure of the steam note down and what is the specific volume specific volume is you have to when since if it is a wet steam you will be having vf as well as vg isn't it if it is a wet steam what both water particle will also be there and vapor particle so what is the volume occupied by the vapor particle at that particular temperature if the water is at 20 degree centigrade volume occupied by the wet steam in the wet steam water occupied by the water particle volume occupied by the steam particle and what is the sensible heat hf what is the latent heat of evaporation and what is the enthalpy of dry saturation this is nothing but equal to what this plus this hg is nothing but equal to sum of sensible heat plus latent heat of evaporation so you have to note down this referring this steam table before we solve the problems so any problems either we will be giving the temperature at which the steam is being generated or sometimes we'll give the pressure at which the steam is being generated if the temperature is given refer the temperature table to the given temperature note down the pressure specific volume and specific enthalpy and then we can find out whatever is asked whether enthalpy of wet steam is asked enthalpy of dry saturated steam is asked whether uh, superheated steam enthalpy is asked so depending on the numericals we can find okay so one such table what we need to refer is temperature table if they give temperature okay so there is one more table which we call it as pressure table so in some problems instead of giving temperature they'll give you the pressure at which the steam is being generated so refer the pressure table and according to the given pressure you have to note down the temperature specific volume and the specific enthalpy so at the given temperature pressure what is the temperature for and what are the specific volume specific volume is volume occupied by fluid particles volume occupied by steam particles what is the sensible heat and what is the latent heat of evaporation what is the enthalpy of dry saturation so this as i said is nothing but addition of these two okay so these are the two tables which we have to refer before solving any numericals temperature table or pressure table if the temperature is given in the problem refer temperature table and note down the corresponding specific volume and enthalpy if the pressure is given in the problem refer pressure table and note down the corresponding temperature specific volume and specific enthalpy so in this particular lesson we did cover the formation of steam at constant pressure and also we discussed the th diagram so what happens to the change in enthalpy when the temperature changes during the formation of steam at constant pressure and during this process we did discuss what are the different states or condition of steam namely wet steam dry saturated steam and superheated steam and we did discuss about the two different temperatures what we come across so initially water will be at zero degree centigrade then one more temperature is saturation temperature at which the water starts boiling and next is superheated temperature is a desired temperature beyond which we eat the dry saturated steam and apart from that we did discuss what the, what does uh, what specific volume means it is nothing but the volume occupied by unit mass of the substrate so there depending on the condition of steam volume occupied by wet steam volume occupied by dry saturated steam and volume occupied by superheated steam can be calculated similarly enthalpy enthalpy is nothing but the heat content of the steam what is the amount of heat that is required to get that particular type or that particular condition of steam so there we can find the enthalpy of a wet steam also enthalpy of a dry saturated steam also as well as we can find enthalpy of superheated steam and apart from that we did discuss how to make use of steam table basically there are two tables temperature table and pressure table if the temperature is given refer temperature table if the pressure is given refer pressure table referring this table we have to note down certain properties of the steam and then find 
whatever that is asked in the numerical so these are the learning outcome of this particular lesson hope to see you soon in the next lesson thank you